Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at the DAO design pattern, database access object pattern and I'm going to show you an example of a database access object. So I've got this, um, this little program here and we've got this form where you can create a user and the idea is that when you type fill details in here and click create user it should add a row to this uh, my, to this table I've got in a MySQL database. So I've got this um, people table with an ID, a name and a password for each person in there. And I've actually renamed some bits of my application to reflect the fact that this is actually a, um, a, a form for creating users here rather than a login form as it was um, originally earlier on in the tutorial. So uh, controller here is listening to the view and when you click that button on this form, this button here, if you filled stuff in at least, uh, actually this, this, this is actually, yeah, well, well I guess whether you fill in st stuff or not, you get this login event received. So the controller receives information about that login event. Now what we want the controller to do is um, we want it, want it to fill in one of these person objects. So we've got this person bean, which is going to be my transfer object. I'm going to use it for transferring data from one place to another. We want it to fill in this transfer object and pass it to a an object which I'm going to call uh, probably person DAO, and that's going to deal with um, deal with the database basically. Let, let's just see how that works because um, it's going to be clearer when I actually type it. So I want to have a class that's got create, retrieve, update and delete methods um, and that can deal with my database to add and remove stuff from the database, find stuff in the database uh, and so on. So I'm going to right click um, my model package here and go to new class and I'm going to call this person D D A O. And the idea behind a, a DAO class is that you basically have um, one DAO class per table or view. So I, I say view because um, you might have multiple tables, uh, but if you update them all together, then you could have a view that um, presents like a, a single table view of what are actually multiple tables. So in that case, you know, like you'll have one kind of, you'll have a DAO object specifically for that. So basically every kind of particular entity that you want to put into your database and take out of, you'd have a DAO that represents it. So we've got a table, uh, a person table in, in the database here. And so I want to have a DAO, DAO object that can deal with people. And I've got my transfer object, my bean, which can hold all the data pertaining to a person. And so now I need to create my person DAO that deals with the database. And I'll give it um, create, retrieve, update and delete methods. Uh, so CRUD for short. Create, re create, retrieve, update, delete methods. So for start, let's give it a method called something like public void uh, add person or create person or something like that. And that will accept a person object and it will add it to the database. And similarly, we, we want um, retrieve methods. So I could have a public person get person and probably um, within your application, if let's say you have people in a list you'd identify the objects in that list with the ID and that will be the ID that's actually in the database associated with each person, the unique identifying ID. So probably when you do get person you just want to pass in an ID. So let's just pass in an ID there to do get person. And for the moment to get this working I'll just return null. And then uh, if you've got like um, a da any kind of normal size database you'll probably have some kind of uh, find some kind of find method that maybe will retrieve a list of people let's say or an iterator even but since I've got I'm going to have like a very tiny database here I'm going to have a method called get people and that's just going to retrieve everything in my database 
and so you can have whatever kind of retrieve methods you want basically uh, just, but you just have to bear in, bear in mind that if it's a big database you definitely don't want to retrieve all of it all of it at once this is only suitable for a very tiny database um, normally you have a find method to find objects in your database so that's create retrieve let's have an update method public void update person I could even call this um, update uh, rather than update person because it's already called person DAO so obviously all these methods just do with people but just to uh, avoid any possible ambiguity maybe it's better to call it update person or get get people rather than just get or update I don't know it's a matter of taste really finally let's have a delete method public void delete person and again for this I'll just pass in an ID you could pass in a person object if you want but you're only going to be deleting by ID probably and again these, these implementation details they're up, they're up to you but the, ess the essence of this really is just to abstract away the details of dealing with the database so we can put um, in this case it would be SQL we could put the SQL in here and then we just use this interface and even if I uh, even if I change the database that we use uh, I could even change it from a SQL, a relational database, to um, um, some kind of uh, LDAP server or something. Then I, I don't need to change the rest of my program because I've abstracted away dealing with the data using this person transfer object and this DAO object. Uh, these methods will remain the same, and this is what my program uses, these methods. It's only the details of these methods that will have to change depending on the database. So now, uh, when I create a person, the controller will, will, will receive the information that, um, that the user wants to create a new person. And for convenience here, I'm going to go to my person object and give it a second constructor, public void, uh, not public void, public person. And I'm going to put in the string name and string password. The, part, the, the idea I've actually set to auto increment in my database so um, I'm not going to pass that into the constructor in this case and this dot password equals password but again that's a kind of implementation detail really so now in my controller I can use my DAO pattern because when the user clicks that button and the controller receives information about that I can say, uh, well, I need a DAO, DAO object to work with. And just, just for the moment here, I'm just going to give it a private instance variable, private person DAO, person DAO, let's call it, equals new person DAO. And I'm going to change this in the next tutorial where we're going to look at using a DAO factory. But for the moment, I'm just going to do it like this. And I'm going to say here, person DAO dot add person. And in there, I pass it a person object. So I can just do new person and uh, event dot get name, event dot get password. And I probably should put in some, some kind of check here, actually. Uh, somewhere along the line, I should make sure that um, I could say string name equals event.getName let's say and I probably should check to make sure that I, sh I should validate the password and stuff like that in fact this isn't this isn't really the best place to do it uh, even um, because it would be better to do the validation in the view so I'm just going to leave that for the moment because I mean it, again it's an implementation detail and I'm kind of wandering off the point but um, the point is to um, to, to be able to just create a new person object and pass that to your DAO that deals with that table and the DAO will then add that person to your database and that's the, the essence of the DAO pattern uh, in the next tutorial we're going to look at um, we're going to look at uh, DAO factories that kind of help you uh, manage your DAO objects basically and uh, what I could do here is um, I don't want to get into J JDBC too much, but I could just, I'll give you a, an example here of just implementing this add 
method and then the rest of the stuff I'm going to implement offline and you can find this code if you want if you want all the details of it on caveofprogramming.com so just as an example we could say here in my, my database class here which manages my database connection I could give that a method like public connection get connection get connection which just returns a database uh, connection an object that represents a database connection and I filled in the kind of details of that using some kind of standard JDBC and then in my person DAO I can say connection say uh, connection con equals database dot get instance dot get connection using my singleton pattern from last time and then here I'll probably use a prepared statement like prepared statement p equals con dot prepare statement and I can pass in some SQL here like insert into people name password I don't pass in the ID because that's auto increment and that's going to be handled for me automatically insert into people name password values question mark comma question mark and then I set the values that I want to uh, insert here let's just add the import for prepared statement it's java.sql dot prepared statement I need to handle the exception here so let's just uh, let's, let's add a throws here and then I can say p dot set string and I set the value for the first parameter which is going to be person dot get name and then p dot set string and I set the value for the second parameter which will be person dot get password and then I can say p dot execute execute update I probably want I think and p dot close now I have to do something with the um, with the exception here so if I go up to my controller we need to surround that with try catch now I need to do something here and what I could do is I could say um, view dot report error or something I could have some method in the view that displays an error and at this point I could tell the view to display that error because the controller is in the business of telling the view what to do uh, and telling the model what to do um, as it is here so we're dealing with the model here the data model now if I run that it's, uh, it's by no means a complete program but I'm going to implement the rest of the stuff outside this video before moving on to the next um, step in this uh, in this stuff which is you can optionally have a a DAO factory and we'll look at that next time so now let's say John password let me in let me in I think that was right create user and then uh, if I go uh, now to my database let's check see if it worked and go to um, SQL here and do select star from people um, then I've got John and let me in and of course this has nothing specifically to do with relational databases so the uh, the DAO pattern um, it will it's good whatever kind of database you're using um, that's kind of the point of it you abstract all the actual dealing with the database you abstract it away into your DAO classes and the rest of the classes are using this nice interface of add person and all that kind of thing so I'm going to put this code on caveofprogramming.com and I keep meaning to mention this course is free but um, I'd really appreciate it if you can if you post a link to www.caveofprogramming.com on Facebook or even better on a blog or a website if you've got one or uh, tell someone about it um, because like the more links there are to my course uh, to my website the better the results in Google so I consider it paid for if you could link to caveofprogramming.com somewhere um, on Facebook or wherever. Thank you very much. And in the next tutorial, we'll look at DAO Factory. And that's it for this time. And until next time, happy coding.